Hello, everyone, and welcome back to ChessLecture.com. My name is Dana McKenzie, and today I'm going to give you a short lecture called My Oldest and Favoritest Trap. This is a trap in the French defense uh, in the two knights variation, which is not a very common variation. Um, and there's a very interesting history behind this trap, which uh, hopefully I'll have time to tell you about after I'm done showing you the trap. Uh, but let's get straight into the opening, and, and, uh, and I'll explain to you what I mean. So uh, this begins e4, e6, the French defense, knight f3. Again, not a very common variation, although this is a move I've played for the last 25 years. d5, black reacts in his normal fashion, and white plays knight to c3. So this is known as the two knights variation of the French defense. And there's one thing I should make clear right away, which is that I'm not actually advocating this opening for white. Um, it's, I think it's just not quite as consequential, not quite as dangerous for black as the main line with d4. However, I do think it's playable, and it's different. It's something your, most of your opponents will not be used to. And um, so if, as I do, you like to force your opponent to solve his own problems in the opening, this might be a good thing to try. Now, the reason this isn't all that dangerous for black is that black has several adequate answers to it. The most common answer uh, that I face many times in tournaments is knight to f6. And this then transposes to more or less mainline French lines after e5, knight to d7, and d4. And possibly if there's interest, uh, I could do a lecture on this, um, but that's not what I'll talk about tonight. There are a couple other good variations for black, too. Black can play d4 and knight to e2 followed by c5. Um, I'm usually happy, though, when I see black play this because I feel as if we've gotten to a, a sort of pawn structure that will not be very familiar to the player of the black pieces. And finally, another perfectly playable, playable variation for black is pawn takes pawn and knight takes pawn. And this could also transpose to mainline stuff. Um, and there was actually a book that came out um, not too long ago about the two knights French, which actually advocates this variation for black. However, there's one move that black really shouldn't play in this position, and that's the move that leads to the trap I'm going to show you. And that move is c5. Now, you might be surprised. I consider this move to be, uh, if not an actual blunder, uh, it's pretty close to it. It's definitely an inaccuracy. And you might wonder why that is, because ordinarily in the French defense, c5 is certainly part of black's overall plan. So why is it bad in this position? Well, to explain this, I have to explain what white's strategy in the opening is. So with by playing knight to f3 and knight to c3, what white is trying to do is get his pieces out very rapidly. Um, I'd like, I'd like to ex explain it by saying that what white is trying to play for is a blitzkrieg style of attack, where he's uh, just bringing out all of his pieces very quickly, not having them constrained by a wall of pawns in the center. Whereas what black usually strives for in the French defense is a sort of trench warfare. And so two very different con conceptions are at work here. And the problem with C5 is that it, it allows white to carry out his blitzkrieg attack, where basically, as we're going to see over the next several moves, every white move is going to create a threat and get a piece out. And so it's a very easy position for white to play in that regard. So uh, we're going to start seeing the trap now. Okay, so first of all, white plays pawn takes pawn, forcing move. Black has to recapture or lose material. Next, white plays bishop to b5 check, also a forcing move. Um, so notice that the only good way for black to get out of check is knight to c6, because if he played bishop to d7, white would play queen e2 check and then win the d5 pawn. Okay. 
So knight c6. Now queen to e2 check. Another forcing move. And here, actually, black has three options. He could either go bishop to e6, or he could go bishop to e7, or he could go knight to e7. And I'm going to talk about the two of those moves later, because they're not really the main trap lines. Um, so bishop e6 and knight to e7. Um, the main trap comes after bishop to e7, which certainly looks like a reasonable enough move. Um, and, you know, certainly seems more reasonable, for example, than knight to e7, which would block off the bishop. But nevertheless, we're going to see that black is now pretty close to losing by force, which is quite surprising. Um, so first step for white is knight to e5. Now, this violates the usual rule about moving a piece twice in the opening. But what we're going to see is that in this position, it's tactically justified. So, of course, you can see white is threatening to win a pawn on c6. Again, can't defend it by playing bishop d7. And so, in fact, really the only way for black to defend this threat is queen to d6. So, again, white has played a forcing move. Next move. And this is, now this is when things start getting really interesting. d4. Okay, so striking right away at the center and also getting his, the rest of his pieces into play. Now, black's next move is not really forced. Uh, black could play a, a developing move, such as knight to f6 or bishop to e6. The trouble with that is that white would then go pawn takes pawn and queen takes pawn. And not only does this create an isolated queen pawn uh, for black on d5, you know, black is... is often willing to, to tolerate that, uh, for example, in the Terrace variation of the French defense. But the problem is that black has also got his queen in a very vulnerable location where white can harass it with bishop to e3 and gain even more tempi. So black doesn't really want that to happen. Plus, if you're a player of the black pieces and you're seeing this variation you've never seen before, it looks as if white is just hanging a pawn. You know, the pawn on d4 isn't defended, so why not take it? All right, well, here's the next move. And what's really neat to see in this trap is the way that white simply ignores anything the black's threatening and just keeps on bringing his pieces out with threats. So white now plays bishop to f4, ignoring the attack on the knight on c3 and threatening discovered attacks on black's queen. Now, what are black's options? If he tries to get his queen out of the attack, say, queen to e6, then he'll just lose material after knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, queen takes queen, followed by bishop takes pawn check, forking the king and rook. So that's no good. Uh, he could try queen to b4. In fact, this is the computer is recommendation for black in this position, Fritz's recommendation. But even this is no, is no good for black because white plays knight takes knight, hitting the queen, pawn takes knight, pretty much forced, bishop takes pawn check, bishop to d7, and now white does not want to take the rook on a8 because that would allow queen takes b2 with some fairly nasty stuff going on. So instead, white simply plays bishop takes bishop check, king takes bishop, and queen to b5 check. And now white's mating threats with his queen and the bishop are strong enough that black is forced to trade queens. And now in this position, white is simply going to be able to castle and round up black's d4 pawn and simply be a comfortable pawn ahead. So, so yes, the computer says this is black's best, but white is, is clearly, if not winning, at least much better in this position. So the queen moves don't work. And so what's left? Well, black might as well just take the knight. Pawn takes knight. And so now, basically, black is 
telling White, okay, prove that you can actually get away with sacrificing all this material. So White goes, knight takes c6, discovering an attack on Black's queen. And Black says, okay, you know, prove it. Queen takes bishop. What are you going to do? Well, the answer is knight takes bishop, discovered check. And, uh, of course, Black can't play bishop d7 because he loses queen after knight takes d5 check. So he's got to move to king. Uh, king f8 would lead to immediate mate in two after knight g6 check, followed by queen to e8 mate. So all that's left is king to d8. And then white can simply go knight takes pawn. Again, threatens mate on e8. Also threatens the black queen on f4. So as we see, this whole line is extremely forcing. Black just does not have much choice. Um, the only way to defend both of those threats for black is to play queen d2 check. And then we get queen takes queen, pawn takes queen, king takes pawn, and now the smoke clears. And what we see is that white is simply a pawn ahead. He's got no weaknesses, way ahead of development. I think it's fair to say that white is... is pretty much winning this game. So an amazing trap uh, and all really just about forced from, uh, from the moment that Black starts swallowing all of that material. Basically, you know, so once, once Black takes this pawn then, and White plays bishop to f4, the rest just, uh, there's not much that Black can do about it. So, a wonderful trap. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the history of this trap. So, uh, I actually discovered this trap myself when I was a graduate student. This was about 25 years ago, um, or maybe around 1982 or 1983. And uh, basically, what I was doing, I was looking at this two knights variation for white um, with the idea of trying to find a way that white can get active peace play in the French defense. Because what I really like as a chess player is active peace play. And so I kind of came up with this line as sort of the, the quintessential realization of what active peace play is all about. I mean, basically in this line what we're seeing is that uh, as fast as black can swallow up white's pieces, white keeps on bringing new pieces into the attack. And, and uh, you know, it's like black goes into feeding frenzy and then <laughs> all of a sudden white ends up with all these discovered attacks and wins. So, um, so that, was, that was my thinking. And um, this was really the first time I had ever discovered a new variation, on my new opening variation on my own. And so I was pretty excited about it. Uh, I've gotten many chances to play it in speed games, but I've never gotten a chance to play it in a tournament game until just two weeks ago when I finally got the opportunity, 25 or 26 years later, uh, to actually play this. So after I got done with the game, um, of course I was really excited, and you know then I went back home and I looked up on Chessbase to see has this ever actually appeared in tournaments before? And what I found out is very interesting. Um, so first of all, the this sort of starting point, you know, the very starting point was Black's mistake with C5. That actually has appeared many times in master games back in the early years of the 20th century. Uh, particularly Frank Marshall, American Grandmaster, liked to play this. Uh, he played it against Emmanuel Lasker, world champion. Uh, he played it also against Janowski, uh, Polish Grandmaster. Um, this also was once played by Al Yechen, also a former world champion, as black. Even though, as I said, it's it's virtually a blunder. Still, Al Yechen played this. And some of the people who played this as white were Capablanca and Spielman. So big names of the, of the earliest 20th century. And what's amazing is that not one of these players actually came up with this whole variation. Um, some of them, for example, Capablanca, I think, got this far, but then he castled. Um, so no one actually came up with the idea of knight e5 followed by d4. So, um, so it really is new to chess theory. You cannot find this in any books. So that's the good news for me. Um, 
the bad news is that I'm afraid I'm not the first person to play this in the tournament because Chessbase said that it had appeared in two tournament games. Um, one of them was a game between two um, like 11-year-olds who clearly did not understand what they were doing. So I don't think that really counts. But the second one was a game between a Russian 12-year-old, a guy named Mikhail Popov, playing the white pieces. And he was playing an opponent who was nine years old. And he came up with this whole thing. He played bishop f4, um, pawn takes knight, knight takes knight, queen takes bishop, the whole thing, knight takes bishop check. And then his nine-year-old opponent played the, the uh, sort of beginner's move, king f8, and then knight g6 check, and the game was over. So this game took place in 2007, last year. And so, um, so I think this means that probably we have to call it the pop-off trap because pop-off was the first person to actually play it in a tournament. And uh, what I think is particularly wonderful is the fact that this trap was discovered um, by a 12-year-old when even people like Capablanca and Lasker could not figure it out for white. Uh, it's just a, a really amazing story. So, um, let me show you just uh, one more thing, or a couple more things. So, back in this position, after the queen check, uh, I, I said there are two other possibilities for black. So, uh, the move bishop e7 leads to the pop-off trap. Okay, but there's also the possibility of bishop to e6, or a possibility of knight to e7. And those moves do not have a spectacular refutation as, the, as bishop to e7 does. So after, for example, um, bishop to e6, white's best move is simply to play d4. And in this position, I think white has a great game. The bishop on e6 looks really kind of sick. Uh, and in fact, white is, is thinking very strongly of playing knight to g5 and trading a knight for that bishop maybe giving black a backwards e-pawn. So that's not too encouraging for black. I've actually faced this twice in tournaments and uh, won one of them and drew the other. The uh, other possibility, knight to e7, is what my opponent actually played against me two weeks ago. And this is a little bit more interesting because I didn't really know if the pop-off trap worked in this position or not. And turns out it doesn't really work. Um, and so White's best move here is simply, again, to play d4 and to continue with normal development. And actually, uh, Black's in a lot of trouble here because his kingside development is so slow and so tangled up. Um, and it's, it's really not very clear how he's going to get out of this box. Um, however, in, in the game, I actually did play knight to e5, trying for the pop-off trap. And let me just show you what happened. Um, so my opponent did play queen to d6. So actually, better move here for black is bishop to e6. And this is why moving the knight to e7 made a difference, because the knight on c6 is now adequately defended. And so this move, knight to e5, really just looks a little bit premature. Um, so that's what black should have played, but he played queen to d6. And so we now continued directly down the lines of the pop-off trap. But here was black's last chance to, um, to escape. He could have played queen to e6 here. And once again, the point is that the knight on c6 is well enough defended. So after knight takes knight, white cannot win a pawn on c6 as he could in the main line. And so instead what I was going to play here was knight to a4. But the computer says after knight g6, uh, actually the computer gives black a slight advantage here. And in any case, it's very complicated, very, uh, very tactical. Um, and who knows what would have actually happened. But this would have been certainly a way for black to, to muddy the waters. But instead, my opponent just kept right on swallowing material, pawn takes knight, Knight takes knight. And then, interestingly, he swallowed a little bit more and played pawn takes pawn. 
And the funny thing is, this just helps White. It helps White by letting him move his rook to, to the D file. And then the game continued. Queen takes bishop. Knight takes knight check. King D8. Knight takes pawn. Once again, threatening checkmate on E8. And now notice that black has no longer has this option of queen D2 check that he did in the main line. So there's no way for him to get out. Uh, he does have one try, which is bishop to b4 check. But then I go knight takes bishop. And so if black could take the knight back with queen takes knight check, then uh, he would be very happy. He'd have a decent game. Unfortunately, uh, Floyd black is in check. <laughs> Floyd just played a discovered check. And so that means that uh, whatever black does, he's going to lose material. Either bishop to d7, rook takes bishop check, it's catastrophe, um, or the move he actually played was king c7, which also then lost the queen after knight d5 check. So a lot of fun. I finally got the chance to play my trap after 25 years. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite sound uh, because of the possibility of bishop e6 that we saw or queen to e6. Um, but uh, I was lucky that my opponent didn't see that. In any case, the trap is completely sound after bishop to e7. And also, I think the verdict on black's third move, c5, is also completely clear that it's just uh, it's just bad. And so if, if black is going to play against this two knights defense, he has to try one of the other variations that I talked about at the beginning of the lecture. Okay, so for ChessLecture.com, this is Dana McKenzie signing out.